Hello Bitwigglers, today I will take a look at the script for the Novation SL Mark II. Um, this script also works for the first version as I heard from some users, but since I don't own a first version Mark I, I cannot testify and there are some slight difference with knobs, but all in all it should work. So if you have a Mark I, you could also give it a try. Also, there is a zero version of the Mark II, which has some different knobs and you can read it up in the wiki how the usage is different there, but it is fully supported as well. Also, the device is not so easy to set up. You can try to have auto detect, but if it's not working, you need to add it manually. Go to uh, Novation and select the SL Mark II. And you need to make sure that you select the second MIDI, MIDI device as the first one and also for the output the second MIDI device. And for the second input select the first because the first is used for the keyboard and for the pitch bender. Okay, so much for the setup. Let's have a look at the script. In the right hand of the script, you have your volume settings and you can change the volume settle. For example, here we have the first channel and you can have the second channel and so on. And with the, this row of buttons, you can select uh, your tracks. There are only two tracks here, so first and second track. And you see uh, the data here of the volume uh, in the display. So this indicates which controllers are selected and then this one lights. This is the thing you see in the display. So whichever row you select, the glowing light indicates to which row and to which control elements the values relate. So the, this one uh, is set control uh, the display. And let's create some tracks here. So we have much more available. And if you use the P2 button here, you can jump in banks of eight. So you can go down, where are we now? We are now at the ninth. And if you press again, you go up to the first. So we can move in banks with these two buttons. The buttons below are a little bit complicated. Um, their behavior changes slightly if you enable transport or disable transport. So this other is the play button. This is a stop button. This one can be used to move the play cursor in the arrange view. And that one toggles your loop on and off and this enables overall recording. On the left side, uh, you have your drums and these are sending MIDI notes. I did not use them for anything else because to be honest, these pads are absolutely crap and then uh, they are inaccurate and you can use it for nothing that is anything critical that the touch really sends a note. So you can use them for playing some notes, but not for really controlling. Uh, the next row is for controlling the currently selected channel. So first one is volume, changes the volume. Next one is the panorama. Next one chooses left. If you're using a crossfader, the A channel or the B channel, or here on both. And then depending on how many cents you have, I only have one cent here, you can change the uh, cent volume. And there are multiple features there. If you press it again, you toggle between three different modes. The first one is the tracks mode. So you access uh, all the tracks. This also relates to these here of uh, the instruments or audio tracks. If you press it again, you move down to the effect 
channels and then that one also the first one controls now the effect volume so with this button you change if you want to see the normal instrument and audio tracks or the effect tracks or if you press it again the master track now with the master track and then you can change the volume and the panning of the master track the next row is also related uh, to your currently selected channel Let's go here up to the first one and uh, here you can have mute, you can solo it, you can toggle recording on and off, you can toggle uh, the write mode here, which is actually globally, but I first thought when I started writing scripts for Bitwig, I thought that the writing is also independent for each, uh, for each track, with how it is with all other doors. But here with Bitwig, it is global, but nevertheless, it's now here put to the track. Next one is uh, for browsing um, patches. I will show that in a second because these four now uh, relate to a currently selected device so these are track track device and also these eights are for controlling devices so let's now have a look at devices here is a polysyn selected and you have the color coding the ones the knobs who are colored uh, the they are currently controlled so if you go up here you see those currently in focus eight uh, parameters and you can change them here as well. And if you go to the second row, ah, again, again here, you have only eight. So again, the P1 button changes the currently selected parameter bank. Uh, let's use that hand here. So you can better see, so for example, now here I can change uh, the filter and so on. And also here are several modes. You can toggle between the normal device parameters, uh, your fixed parameters. Fixed parameters means if you go into the configuration, these are the normal banks and these are the fixed section. So you can get to these parameters when you press that button once again and if you press it three times you have the direct parameters direct parameters are most interesting for vst instruments because there you get all the parameters of a vst instrument so for example let's load something in here let's have my trusty student one here and you see now the parameters of the VST instrument and can also modify them. And if you go to the device parameters, you see there's nothing there. So this is uh, empty for VST instruments, but uh, nevertheless, you can create your own one and then they are also appearing here. So if we go back to the third row, as I said, also these four buttons are related to devices. So these two buttons just move between devices. There is only one. So let's add another one. Oops. Let's add a Q or whatever and a flanger. And now with these two buttons, you can navigate in these devices. The next one is also turning on and off. Let's go here. It's turning on and off your device. And the browse button does give you the patches of this device. And you have three filters. You can filter for, for the category, for the author, and for the actual um, device. And to change this, we are still on that row. So with these two buttons, you can navigate through the list. So for example, let's select, um, we want to have bass sounds and then you can say, okay, I want that bass sound. Okay. And as you also see, I can play the keyboard as well and use the pitch bender and the modulation wheel.
So what's missing is the first row. The first row contains a lot of helper functions. For example, undo and redo actions. You have a delete button, you have a double, you have a new button. And the new one creates new clips on the selected track. So let's press that one and makes it ready for recording. So we are, that's a pretty handy feature. And this is now uh, has a length of one measure. And if you want to change that, you press the button again, and then you can select how long you want the clip to be. So let's now say it should be two bars. Go back here, new. Now we have a two bar loop going on. Yeah. <laughs> and let's stop that. So back to that one, what is missing there? Um, there you can toggle the metronome on and off and the browser just toggles the browser window on and off. You can't see that, let's make that smaller here. So again, browser on and off. And the last one there you can tap the tempo. So make that faster. That was slower, not faster. Yeah, that's pretty fast now. <laughs> okay, let's stop that here. So this was basically the control mode where you can control your tracks and devices. And there is a second mode which allows you to, um, to play and uh, do sequencing. So this one is changed. If you press the transport button, you can select those two modes. And now I go to play. And the play has now different features. The first row allows you to start scenes. So let's start the first scene. Funny. <laughs> Second one, there's only the bass and stop that stuff. Okay, so these are the scenes. Uh, second row is the same, is still devices and also, uh, no, that row is different. And this is the same, so the button ones are different here. Um, this is now we're in the play mode here, so if you go here, you see, you can play the notes. And the idea for sequencing is that with that button here, you can toggle between playing, so also selecting a note, and the actual sequencing of that note. So to do sequencing, uh, let's create a new empty track here, have it playing with the metronome enabled. Uh, maybe let's put the tempo down again. And now we have selected that note that's already recording. And now you can change with that button to the sequencer. And you see now the sequencer running for that note. We can delete that note. And let's now create a melody. Go back to the note selection. We take that note now. Back to here. And this is a pretty funny sequencer here. Let's stop that. To stop, uh, to, to use the navigation keys in, in that mode, you need to press transport and then you can also press stop. There, that was the sequencing and playing mode. You can also use that with drums. One last feature I want to show you, if you go to preferences, there are several settings here, uh, actually one. <laughs> Uh, where you can select what the behavior of the of that pad here is. So you can choose between that it acts as a crossfader. You can send to MIDI CCs, which you can learn then in Bitwig, or always the first macros. 
So the one is in the x axis and the other is the, uh, there is the x axis and here is the y axis which then sends those two uh, ma macro parameters. So you have quite some options how this pad acts for you. Yeah, that was the introduction to the remote uh, SL Mark II script. I hope you enjoyed it and goodbye and don't forget to make some music. <laughs>